Now, the format of the masterclass is simple. I'll be presenting and facilitating the topics. <clears throat> There'll be some simple exercises and reflections for you to do during the session. So you can learn some things about yourself. And then as uh, I think we mentioned in the chat, there will be a Q&A session right at the end. So I'm gonna ask you to write down your questions and we'll give you a chance at the end to run through them. We can actually open up the, um, uh, the videos. We'll be switching off the recording. Uh, just to mention, by the way, it's being recorded this session. I just sent, send a note out to everybody. Um, also, in addition to that, I've got a, a lovely friend of mine, Anne Camargo, who's facilitating the Zoom. So if you have any questions about the Zoom, um, or technical issues, then you can put something in the chat to Anne Camargo and she'll be more than happy to help you. All right. So let's kick off. So it's a very common situation that we all find ourselves in our lives uh, for most of the time. That's that most of us are running around 100 miles an hour, constantly being bombarded with challenges, negativity and conflict in our personal lives in uh, our work and also in the media, particularly at the moment. <clears throat> now this can all have a significant impact on the amount of energy that we have, um, where it goes and how much we have to spare. We get tired, we get frustrated and we run out of it. Uh, and everything can feel like we're wading through treacle a little bit at times. Now the depletion of our energy can impact our engagement, our level of engagement, our ability to focus, our ability to remain objective. It can reduce our motivation. It can create procrastination and lethargy, and it can create stress and anxiety or increase it if it's already there. And the most significant thing all of that can impact as well is the um, impact on our sleep and on, on our appetite. And as we know, that underpins everything. So this masterclass is really all about how we can change that, particularly if we're stressed or, or we're feeling anxious or we're running around at 100 miles an hour. Um, and in doing, in doing so, stop expending our energy on that and actually conserving it for other things. Now, this is going to take a little bit of work from us and we need to know a few things before we can get to the meaty stuff. So lean in with an open mind and I'll talk you through it. Um, what I want to do first is just kind of give you some clarity in terms of the objectives um, and the things that you're gonna take away today. So we're gonna, you're gonna learn how developing your self-awareness is the key to transformational change. All right, we use this a lot in coaching, but you can also use it yourself. You don't need a coach to be able to learn uh, certain things about yourself to help you with this. You're also going to learn about your frame of reference, reference and how it creates your beliefs, your belief system. We're then going to learn how that your beliefs then control your thoughts and then your feelings and then your actions. And also learn to recognize the seven distinct lenses through which people see the world and also identify some of the ones that might be holding you back in your life. We're going to learn about the inner blocks that prevent you from achieving what you want out of life. Maybe some clues as we go through uh, that you can note for yourself. And finally, then we're gonna learn how to tap into your unlimited potential. What I mean by that is once you've identified some things that might be holding you back, that's new potential that you've identified. And then looking at that, you can actually think about where you might add some more energy in your life from what you've learned today. Okay, so before I do that, um, I want to bring some context around uh, what we're all up against with some statistics. And I'm talking about the piece at the beginning about running around at 100 miles an hour and using all our energy, right? So <clears throat> we're going to look at some statistics, some simple statistics in relation to frustration, anxiety, stress, and of tiredness. You can actually put that into an acronym, a clever acronym, FAST. Um, <clears throat> so we can call that something like being in the fast lane, for example. So I'll just go through these briefly with you. So um, in terms of um, engagement, there was a poll to undertaken by Gallup in 2020-21, and um, unsurprisingly, only 13% of employees are actually engaged at work. So that is actually a significant number of people who are unengaged, emotionally disconnected to the workplace, 
and le like, less likely to be productive. And this can often, this, this can actually be, this cause of frustration can actually dig into our personal life as well. It's not just all about work. And the frustration can be caused by annoyance of things, by co-workers or people in our personal lives or ineffective leadership or ineffective communication. Um, <clears throat> the next stat, this is from uh, the Mental Health Found Foundation. So 74% of UK adults have felt stressed at some point over the last year and they felt overwhelmed or unable to cope. Now, given the situation that we're all in at the moment or have been in, that is not surprising at all. But nonetheless, this was already on the rise even before the pandemic. Another statistic from um, MIND. So one in six people report experiencing a common mental health problem like anxiety or depression or a panic attack in any given week in England. Um, anxiety is often impact, impacts on our productivity and our frustration, which impacts our well-being, our sleep, our appetite for food, our appetite for physical exercise. Um, so a considerable impact on, you know, pre a pretty significant number of all of us. Um, and then if you look at sleep, one in three of us in the UK suffer from poor sleep, from stress, um, and computers are often, uh, computers and stress and taking work from home are often blamed, and that's from NHS England. And it's extremely relevant because basically sleep underpins everything. It impacts everything that we do. Now, the last uh, statistic here, uh, and I don't want to, 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 to put a downer on your day, it's a rather sobering statistic, but according to WHO in 2020, depression is now um, a leading cause of disability worldwide, it is a major contributor to the overall global burden of disease. So these statistics are quite significant, okay? And now, whilst I'm not here as an expert on sleep or mental health, um, I can teach you how to shift perspectives, actually bring more energy into your life and actually hopefully soften some of the things that might be causing you some um, distress in your life. OK, so what we're going to do is um, we're going to do a little exercise uh, to kick off. It won't take very long because this masterclass is all about bringing more energy into your life. We're going to talk about um, taking some time to reflect on you and look at some areas that you might be, that might be taking up some of your energy, some of your time, some of your focus, um, and where you're going fast at 100 miles an hour. So what I'd like you to do is to divide a piece of paper into four. Um, if you can write frustration, and then anxiety, and then stress, and then tiredness, break that down onto your piece of paper. <clears throat> and we're going to start with um, frustration. And uh, this is where you might feel upset or annoyed about something because you've got an inability to change or achieve something. OK, we all experience that at some point. I'd like you to take 30 seconds um, just to think about one or two things that might cause you frustration in your life. And then I'd like you to scale it between one and ten, one being not very much at all and ten being you know, this is really stressful, okay? So I'm gonna give you 30 seconds just to write down one or two things in your life, okay? Just off you go. An example for me, if just as you're writing, might be technology if it lets me down or when I'm constantly having to battle to do to get something done. Okay. Okay, stop there. Then we're going to look at anxiety. So anxiety is whereby you might be feeling uh, worry, nervousness, or unease about something, something that's imminent, maybe some some sort of change in your life. All right. Um, maybe procrastination over deadlines or something like that. Um, if you just take 30 seconds to write one or two things down that cause you anxiety, and then again, scale them from one to 10, 10 being really, really, uh, really anxiety, anxious and one being not so. Okay, if you go.
Okay. And then I'd like you to look at stress. So if you think about uh, your state of mental or emotional strain or tension resulting from adverse or very demanding circumstances. So might, maybe something like losing your mobile phone or your daily commute to work. So just take 30 seconds to um, write down one or two things and then scale them from one to 10. Off you go. Okay, and then lastly, consider um, tiredness in the last section. So where are you feeling tired? Where are you having no energy to do things? I'm not talking about, you know, if you haven't slept for the night, I'm talking about when you have slept and the sort of things you've got to do might make you tired or drain on your energy when you've got to do something. So just for another 30 seconds, maybe think of one or two things and then again, scale it from one to 10, off you go. All right, if you just stop there for a moment. Okay, so I invite you to do this outside of the session because it's actually quite an in interesting thing to do, particularly once you've learned what I'm gonna tell you um, throughout the rest of the session, but you've actually identified some areas that in your life that might be draining your energy. And now with a bit, bit of wisdom and some, a few tools and techniques, you may well have the opportunity to be able to make some tweaks to that. So we're gonna start at the beginning, so you've got to bear with me here. We're going to need to learn a few things about human beings and the way that we think and how it can impact us physically and why. OK, so I'm going to start off with a um, using some Mr. Men to demonstrate a little bit about human beings and the way that we think and also introduce you to some simple neuroscience. So as human beings, when we, when we look at something and um, it can either be a person, a situation, <clears throat> or an experience of some kind, um, if we um, don't like it or causes us stress or discomfort, we tend to abdicate responsibility. That's the first option. We basically resign ourselves to the fate, we moan about it and become a victim to that circumstance, right? It doesn't feel very nice. Um, can actually feel like we've got no energy at all. For, that's that wading through treacle experience that I was talking about earlier on. So that's the first option. <clears throat> the second option is that we can actively take responsibility um, and do something different. So we actually change the situation or put ourselves in a different situation or take us away from it and remove ourselves. And, and by doing so, I think we can all recognize that actually when we do that, we actually feel different. We think different and we feel different. OK, our energy shifts inside us. Now, sometimes we don't have. Um, the ability to be able to take us out of a, of a circumstance. But there is a third option, <clears throat> which is less obvious, that we use in coaching an awful lot. And that is to accept the situation as it is, and then think different about, think differently about it, change perspective. And you'll know, I'll give you an example, when you're, um, when something, you think something bad's going to happen, or you think you've, you haven't done something, or you, you kind of get that feeling of dread inside you, and you kind of, oh, and then all of a sudden you realize that actually you did do the thing you were going to like, I don't know if you thought you left the gas on, for example, and then you realize you had switched the gas off or something, but actually you can feel emotionally um, how different you feel. It can actually feel that shift inside you. Okay. So just imagine for a moment, if a situation causes you discomfort because you think about it in a certain way, if you can switch your thinking or switch off your thinking, then you can actually do something about it. And that's kind of what this session is all about. It's about 
how can we change perspective and then shift to actually get more energy in our lives? And, and, I, and I, we use this all the time in coaching practices, but um, something that I learned um, th during my coach training program, I thought it was absolutely amazing. And that's why I, I have so much passion about sharing it with people. So before I do that, I'm gonna just talk about our brains. So bearing what I've just said in mind, um, as we grow up and we see the world, um, we start to interpret the world through filters, okay? So we get experiences, then we have a belief system, uh, we have values that, 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 that we're given or we, 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 we gain. Um, and I'll talk more about your belief systems later, but generally speaking, we view the world through those filters. And then when we're presented with a situation that matches our belief systems and values, um, we tend to judge it as positive and our energy shifts up, we feel good. And then if we view a situation that we're, we're presented with is not in alignment with us, we may judge that situation or negative, it may, makes us feel sort of funny inside and it can actually drain us of our energy, it can actually feel disconcerted, uh, angry, um, all those things that, you know, if you don't agree with something, so it can actually have a significant impact. So it impacts the amount of energy that we have to do things, all right, for given tasks. Now, because our, our belief systems are, are kind of generated from birth, we tend to run in, on autopilot. So we're able to function, but we don't, we're not really conscious of what we do. We just do it, we just react, okay? I think we're all familiar with that. Um, and often the beliefs that we have that drive that are either given to us or they come from our education or uh, they're just things we've never really thought about, okay? But as a human being, we have the capacity to be able to evaluate ourselves and actually decide whether we, we want to keep something or not, or perhaps we don't agree with something. Some of us haven't even looked at ourselves in any way, shape or form to actually understand the way that we think. And this is part of the session that we're going through today, actually looking at that in a, in a, in a little bit. Um, now, that capacity to be able to transform ourselves we call self-awareness, okay? So we have the ability to be able to transform ourselves with self-awareness. And once we have that, then we have the ability to be able to sort of shake and shift who we are and then start to be able to rewire our brain a little bit. Now, to put that into practice, I'm going to ask you to um, jump straight into another exercise. And this exercise, is called Who Am I? And what I would like you to do is I would like you to write at the top of your piece of paper, who am I? And then ask yourself that question. When, when I start the clock, you're gonna have a minute for this. I want you to ask yourself, who am I? And then I want you to write down the answer. And then I want you to ask yourself the question again. And I want you to write down the answer and keep asking yourself the question and just keep writing the answers, okay? So, um, I'll give you a minute just to do that now. And um, when you've finished, I would just want you to start reflecting on the answers, on your list of answers that you wrote down. So off you go. always feels like a long minute when you're sitting here on your own. <laughs> okay, just coming up to the minute now. Right, so I just want you to reflect on the answers that you wrote down. Now we're gonna have a chance to ask, for you to answer, ask questions at the end of this session, um, but reflect on your answers for a moment and 
Did you find perhaps that you had quite a lot of labels written down? Sometimes we say, you know, I'm Justin, I'm, I'm, I'm this age, or um, I do this for a job, or etc. Some of you might have gone a little bit deeper. Some of you might find it easy. You might talk about maybe some of your traits, your habits, your likes, your values, or even some of your emotions. You might say things like I'm kind or I, I can be aggressive or whatever. But basically what you'll find is that some people find this easier than others, um, but some people find that they actually go quite deep. <clears throat> and when you actually do this exercise together, it's very interesting, particularly in a workplace, you actually find out much more about somebody that you work with because you actually ask quite, quite um, deep and curious questions um, to each other. <clears throat> now, if you identify with labels, labels are very gr a very good thing that we use as human beings because they allow us to be able to describe things very, very easily. And, but what they do is they put us into boxes. So, for example, if you were maybe someone that was um, reliable, for example, and you were called reliable all your life uh, and then you weren't reliable, it might actually make you feel a little bit strange. So <clears throat> you have to be careful with labels. They're very good at allowing human beings to define each other and put themselves into box, particularly at work as well. But personally, what you're doing is you're actually uncovering layers of yourself in terms of self-awareness, okay? And this is what self-awareness um, um, is all about. It's actually being able to um, look into ourselves and to be able to identify things about ourselves and not just function on autopilot, okay? So, um, the advantage of um, being able to do this is that you can actually start to understand who you are. Uh, you can use your emotions um, as guiding posts. I'll talk to you about that in a moment. Um, but actually, it's the, a way to, to, to create self-reflection, to be able to think about things you might want to change. And this is all key to the piece about changing perspective. So you need to be able to <clears throat> understand yourself before you can actually start shifting that perspective, all right? But well done, everyone. You've just taken your first step towards getting to know yourself and, and, and perhaps what you're not. Now, so what is self-awareness and why is it so important? Well, if we're not aware of who we are or why we do the things we do and why we react, um, and we just, we just react instead of kind of like choosing how to respond in situations, um, we never really change. Some people that that's fine if you don't want to, there's no judgment around that. But for some of us that are interested in changing our behavior, this piece of self-reflection is key. And in coaching, we use it an awful lot. And I'm, I'm, a, I'm a little bit like a self-reflection mirror on, on steroids. You can see the picture of the guy there putting his hand up against the, the mirror. I'm, I'm literally, I'm, I'm like the mirror doing that um, hardcore. But you can do this yourself. You can reflect on it yourself. And you can even do it with friends as well. Now, um, apart from anything else, and this is this is key, emotional intelligence is something that a word that we hear all the time now, um, is a, a key component uh, for leaders in um, within within the workplace, and self awareness is the key component to developing emotional intelligence. So, just for, for your information, self self awareness, um, sorry, emotional intelligence it comprises of self awareness self-regulation, empathy, social skills, and motivation. So without the self-awareness piece, if you're not aware of yourself, you can't be aware of other people. And the, the wonderful thing about emotional intelligence is you can actually strengthen it like a muscle. So unlike IQ, you can actually improve your emotional intelligence, okay? Now, one of the most positive um, impacts of working on yourself is being aware of your triggers and your blocks. Now triggers, what I mean by that is, you know, when somebody presses your button and they might say something and you go, oh, that really annoyed me. So that's, that's an example of a trigger or a button. Um, blocks might be, when I talk, I'll talk a little bit later about blocks, but um, if you have a limiting belief about yourself, you know, for example, if you think like, I don't know, a simple one might be, um, if you're taught not to um, uh, challenge uh, uh, a peer, or sorry, a, a, an elderly, an el a more elderly person, if you were brought up like that, that might be one of your limiting beliefs. I'll talk about that more in a moment. Now, just to, to um, recap, self-awareness is where we focus our awareness on ourselves. Um, unlike awareness, we have the ability to take note of what's going on around us, right? So, when you, when you have awareness of, of other people, you can see what's going on around you, but this is where we take note of ourselves. 
uh, as we become more aware of ourselves and become more conscious, then we become more aware of internal activity that's going on inside us. And as we do that, we start to notice more about our thought patterns, um, uh, the way that we think we might sort of do things over and over again the same way, but we never question it. And that's, I call that gold because you can actually then, once you identify it, then that's, if you want to change it, you can. And um, what you begin to see is um, physical processes within us. So emotions, feelings inside us, and that, that, that word emotion, yep. But emotions are like a barometer because they actually tell you what's going on because they are linked to your, to your thoughts. And well, we can actually tune into our intuition, the more aware we, we become of ourselves, really powerful thing. Uh, and then, believe it or not, even if something is not great or we perceive it not to be great, we can actually enjoy any experience as a human being. OK, and that is our ability or the capacity for self-awareness that makes that possible. Now, <clears throat> um, we've taken the initial step towards understanding a little bit more about who we are a little bit deeper and we've actually created some self-awareness. So I, I, hopefully everybody is a little bit clearer about what self-awareness is and why it is um, so useful and so powerful. Now, just to take that um, one step further, I want you to, to talk to you now a little bit about your window on the world or your, or your beliefs. So the way that we think uh, on all this self-awareness, where does it come from? Well, when you're born, um, you don't have any belief system. You don't have any ego. Literally, you're born. And then what happens is um, your parents influence you, where you're born, your early childhood, your gender, things like your culture, um, your sexuality, your education, your aspirations, your spirituality, etc., your background, your socioeconomic background. And then all these other things, <clears throat> excuse me, come. Maybe you have uh, some mental health issues particular hobbies and interests and illness, your achievements, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So all of this creates the core of your belief system and also add your values into that. Um, and they become the um, filter through which you experience the world, all right? So we are all unique. We have different filters. We have different backgrounds. So that window on the world and that filter system is very unique to us. And it's very, it's, it's something you should always, or I would suggest that you always bear, bear in mind when you're having a conversation with someone else because different people have different influences. So we're all different. And that's what makes us all wonderful. Now, <clears throat> as we're presented with situations, you pass them through um, your filters of your belief system. So, and when they're in alignment, as I mentioned earlier on, if they're, if they're positive and good, you judge them as positive or good. And if they go against your view or your belief system, then you might judge them as negative or bad. Now, for example, in my family, the focus has always been on service to others and, uh, and helping others. And to a point, actually, probably up to about 10 or 15 years ago, um, if somebody went against that, I would see them as judging them as being selfish or rude. Uh, and with, you know, it's, it's nice to be in service to people, but not all of the time. So I had to shift some of my own belief systems to be able to actually um, to alter that in terms of the way that I operate, just to kind of look after myself a little bit and be, be kinder to myself in some way. So your belief system is really, really important because what it gives you is once you start digging into it a little bit, it gives you those clues at a deeper level as to how you might want to change something. So if you have a value or a belief that was given to you by your parents, we often do things we don't know why we do, right? You can actually identify um, some thinking that um, you might want to kind of tweak and change. So, <clears throat> and just to kind of uh, complete on that, sometimes our beliefs can be tied up in knots and we feel like we, we, we don't know why, but with some work, you can actually begin to unpick them a little bit. And that's why, um, uh, th that's what I encourage people to do if they're kind of on this self-awareness consciousness journey. So just to recap there, so we see the world in very different ways including our feelings, our beliefs, and our behaviors. And we all see things slightly differently because we're unique. And we treat ourselves and others differently too. Um, so when you are communicating with each other and view it and your view of the world is through your own filter and their view of the world through their own filter as well, it's important that you consider your own frame of reference and their frame of reference because they are never really the same. 
Now, why am I, why am I telling you about this? Why is it so important? Well, I'm going to let you into, it's not really a secret, but it's something that I learned um, very early on when I started having coaching. And <clears throat> it's that there is a linkage, a very, very powerful linkage between the way that you think based on your past and your belief system and the feelings that you feel, <clears throat> the emotions that are associated with those, those thoughts based on your past experience and also the way that we act. All right. Now, I'll demonstrate that a little bit to you because sometimes it can be a bit of a <clears throat> an abstract concept. So what I would like you everybody to do is just to kind of take a moment, close your eyes, if you like, might make it easy if you're somebody that can visualize and just think for a moment about a trigger that you might have or something that winds you up very quickly. Now, it might be just not something too powerful, but something maybe in your day, maybe you're somebody in your family, your partner or situation you're driving or something like that. And just think, visualize the situation. And then I want you to just, just feel with your body because the interesting thing about this um, is that when you visualize something in your thoughts, your body still feels it. It's almost like your, your brain doesn't know the difference between if you are seeing something for real or you're thinking it. And that's why visualization techniques are used a lot in coaching and also NLP, <clears throat> because it actually allows you to re-experience the situation based on kind of that, that, that thought, feeling, action, connection. So what normally happens? So you, you're, you'll have that thought and your brain will kind of go back and, and look at kind of, okay, what, what's happened in the past? What's the frame of reference? And the hardwired thought, feeling and action will come into play. And you, if it's something that really winds you up, it can, it can, it can spoil the next hour of your day, all right? Or it might be something really positive that, that brings you up, all right? And that's that energy thing um, that, I, that I'm talking about. So guess what? The exciting thing is with work, you can work on those thoughts. You can change your perspective and you can actually stop taking up energy on things that um, don't serve you or might irritate you. And you can actually shift the way that you think and actually um, stop using your energy on things that you don't want to, okay? Now, one thing I'll point out, um, some people don't, don't like this and it, it's absolutely fine, but just to point out that grudges, entitlement, or judgments actually use up an awful a lot of our energy um, and actually can cause us a lot of discomfort and frustration. So when we go into the next section talking about energy and the, uh, the perspective levels, I'll, I'll highlight that so you can actually see what I'm talking about. Now, talking about um, just one more thing about um, grudges and um, entitlement and, and um, uh, the, the thoughts, feelings, and actions piece. There's one other key piece of information that I'd like to share you just at a high level before we move into another exercise, just so you can, you can kick, kick off this, this thinking that you've learned. So that it, there are four other inner blocks that basically, in addition to the belief system values, that actually the, a way of thinking that stops us or prevents us from doing certain things. And I just want to introduce those to you now um, because they'll add a little bit of extra um, information and wisdom to your to the tool kit that I'm giving you. So the first one is um, we call limiting beliefs. And I talked about those earlier on. They're linked to your belief system. Now, a limiting belief is something that you accept about life, about you and about the world or about the people in it that limits you in some way. So I'll give you some better examples of limiting beliefs. So you might say, for example, uh, you might be brought up to say, I can't tell the truth because I might get judged. That might be part of your belief system. Or I don't want to get too close to this person because my heart gets broken because that's what you think. Or I don't want to ask for what I want because what if I get rejected? Or I can't trust people because they betray you. So that might be a limiting belief that's some extreme examples that, that might be holding somebody back from actually you know, going into relationship or becoming closer to somebody. Now, the next inner block is called an assumption. And an assumption in coaching is slightly a slightly different 
um, than just a general assumption, because in coaching, an assumption is something that has happened to you in the past. An expectation that something that's happened to you in the past will happen again. So an example of that might be um, every time you have challenged something in the past, it has gone unheard. Therefore, there's no point in challenging it again. Nothing will ever change. Or perhaps you've been hurt by someone in the past and therefore everyone will hurt you and you need to protect yourself. So that's an example of an assumption. Maybe consider where you might have one of those in your life. The next one is interpretations. Interpretations are an opinion or judgment that you create about an event, a situation, a person or experience and believe it to be true. So an interpretation might be an example. Um, you have a simple conversation with somebody on the phone and they are a little bit unfriendly or the normal. So you might make up a story that they're off with you or don't like you anymore. Uh, another one might be that you receive an email from your boss, uh, which is very short, very curt. Um, and you make a judgment that they're being short with you uh, or they're annoyed with you in some way. So an interpretation is a little bit sometimes like watching a film and watching a situation and making up the ending. And I think we all do that to some degree, particularly when we're using text messages and emails to communicate with each other. And the last one and the biggest one of all is the gremlin or the inner critic. Now the gremlin is the voice in your head that tells you in one way or another that you are not good enough. Now, some of us have got really noisy chatter some of us um, can't hear them or that they're just aware of thoughts, um, but we all have one. Um, and actually I've named mine, mine's called Brian, and I named him about um, <laughs> probably about eight years ago. But anyway, the, the purpose of your gremlin is to keep you safe, okay? And um, the gremlin um, information is all based on your past experiences, all based on your belief systems that I've talked about, your frame of reference, and also, um, um, experiences that you had um, in the past. Now, the um, inner critic um, might say to you something like, I don't know, you're in a meeting and you're about to put your hand up and the little voice tells you, oh, don't be silly, put your hand down, you'll make a fool of yourself. And then that might cause anxiety because of the trigger. And then basically you don't say anything, particularly if you're an anxious person. Or you might go to a party and you might have a new pair of shoes that they're new, they're a bit out there, um, but a little voice in your head says, oh, don't put those on, who do you think you are? Um, it's a bit showy off you, isn't it? And you end up not putting the shoes on at all. Now, the, as I said, the gremlin is here to keep you safe. However, you can actually learn to kind of just say, no, thank you and move, move on from it because your gremlin, your inner critic isn't actually you, it's only a part of, of you, which is part of your frame of reference, all right? So that's quite a lot of information to take in. Um, I hope that kind of gives you a, a clue about what your inner blocks are. Um, maybe something to, to reflect upon as we go into the next exercise. So the next exercise is um, about a perspective, All right? So this is where we start to um, get into the sort of how we, how we change the perspective. But first of all, as part of this session, I would like you to think about a current perspective in your life where you might be having the same reaction to it over and over again, right? It's the same, it's a pattern. It happens, it might be, I don't know, your partner drives, drives a car in a certain way and it, it winds you up, or it might be um, uh, the way your kid speaks to you, or it could be just something that you see and every day you react in a certain way, all right? Don't do anything that's too strong that makes you really fired up and angry. Just maybe something that just, you know, triggers you a little bit, okay? So just bear that in mind for a moment. And then I'm gonna give you um, just a moment. What I'd like you to do again is close your eyes and I want you to visualize that situation. And think about your current perspective and think about how you, what you think about it and how it kind of, how it makes you feel. Just stay there for a moment. And then I'm gonna give you um, a couple of minutes 
to write down a few things about it. So I want, as you're visualizing, I want you to think about the words that you're thinking. What's the story? What emotions are you feeling? And where do you feel it in your body? And how does it make you act? What do you think triggers you? What's your thinking? Are you judging a person, a situation, or perhaps yourself? And are you holding on any judgments about anything? I know there's a lot there, just, but just take, just take a minute. Okay, then that's a minute up. Right, I hope everything's so far so good. I'm just gonna stop sharing my screen for a moment. And I wanna to talk to you a little bit um, about something else for a moment. So I want you to park that perspective just for a moment. And for the next part of this masterclass, I'm gonna to talk to you about energy and how it's connected to your thinking and your perspective and how shifting it can actually give you more. But how does that work, Justin? I can hear your thinking. Well, um, let's put what we've learned so far um, sort of into this context. So shaking off that perspective that you just had just a moment ago, I want you to now think for just a moment, um, a situation, a very simple situation from your past when you are not drained of energy, um, and when your life is flowing and you're not frustrated, anxious, stressed, or tired or fast, okay? Now just visualize that situation for a moment. Let it sit into you. And then just write down a few words to describe that situation. And any moment that, any moment that comes to mind, just write just four or five key words. Okay, so I'd like to shake that off. And now I want you to think about or bring back your perspective that you just visualized earlier on. So the one that caused you a bit of frustration and stress. Just bring, again, bring that into, into your front of, my, into front of mind, close your eyes again. Imagine that experience and that trigger for a moment. And then I want you to consider what it would be like to pull yourself out of that feeling, out of the fast lane, back into a more peaceful state, like the first situation that you wrote down, back into your flow, so to speak. So just let go of any thoughts as you pull that situ situation into the fast lane. Nice, huh? But what does it take to get there? Right, so we've already discovered how we experience the world is dependent on the lenses of perspective through which we view it based on our belief systems and our values, etc. So again, just example, if you think about one day, if you've got loads of things to do and every day fills you with overwhelm, you probably look through the world like, uh, for a lens, like you're looking at a huge mountain like this in front of you because your lens is, is like this because it's you're so frustrated. And then if it's the opposite, if you've got all these things to do and you're excited, you might feel really excited about it, all right? So you're looking through the exciting lens instead. And if we were to put those lenses into a contextual framework, we could describe these 
as distinct energetic lenses, okay? And I'll talk about more about these lenses in a moment in detail. In fact, there are seven of them, which, which, which I'm gonna to talk to you about. So depending on your view or perspective at that moment, we can it can have a significant impact on the energy that we use up, the way we think and the way we physically feel, or our performance, if you like. If you don't want to use the word energy, you can use performance. So essentially how we view the world will create either stress for us or not. And by understanding the way that we look at the world, by, situ by situations and people, we get a great deal of insight into how we operate. So by changing our energetic lens of awareness, literally like taking off this set of glasses, putting them down, and then trying another pair on with a different perspective can actually create a different view of the same situation, but with a more supportive perspective to help you, all right? So let me tell you a little bit more about energy. Um, and I'm going to switch to a slightly different uh, set of slides here because I'm an IPEC coach uh, and um, uh, there's a specific uh, piece of the framework that I'm gonna use for this section, which is IPEC proprietary material. Okay, so I'm just going to read this passage out to you. So everything is energy and that's all there is to it. Match the frequency of the reality you want to and you cannot help but get that reality. It can be no other way. This is not philosophy. This is physics. So what am I, what am I talking about here? So, well, everything is composed of energy, really. I mean, it's literally me, the space around me, um, including the thoughts that we have, right? So uh, from molecule down to atom all the way down to space. You know, it's just, it just includes our thoughts. So those lenses are energetic lenses, right? So when you see the world through a particular lens, it literally creates your reality. What do I, what do I mean? I'm not talking about energy woo -woo. I'm talking about just, just, just energy, right? So a simple explanation might be, uh, when I was looking for a, a car a few years back, I wanted a, a red Range Rover and I set my heart on it. Um, and literally all I saw for the next three or four months was, was Red Range Rovers because my focus and attention in my head was on uh, a Red Range Rover. All right, I think we've all probably experienced that at some point in life. I didn't actually end up getting it, I ended up getting something else, but nonetheless, for that period of time, all I saw was those cars. Now, a more concrete example of that might be, if you view the world as an angry place, then you will see situations and, in, and make interpretations that support your point of view. And so what you will look for, you will actually find and attract into your life. So if you think about your life for a moment and think about the people around you, um, there are always people fighting all the time in conflict or they feel the world is against them, right? We've, we've all experienced that. Um, this is not because these people were born angry. It's perhaps just their belief systems or perspectives um, that that person has developed about the world. And if you think about the people that you're attracting in your life, uh, who have a similar perspective, that's because perhaps they match your energetic perspective. And if you notice you are surrounded by drama, perhaps it's an opportunity to explore what's drawing them to you. Now, I'm not, this is not a judgment, by the way, this is not my job to do that. I'm just trying to point out that our perspective influence um, what, we, what, we, what we experience in, in our world. Um, so if you're the type of person that looks for problems instead of solutions, so what? It just is. But that's your current belief system. And somebody that has the opposite, where they have a, a glass that's half full, might be more objective, more, 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 um, more objective, more, more opportunist perspective. All right. And, but you have the power to be able to change that if you want to. Um, I want you to just write something down that I, I, I learned when I was going through my coach uh, program that I, I absolutely loved. And it was um, where your focus or intention goes, energy will flow. All right. So where your in focus or attention goes, energy flows. Now, on the subject of um, energy, I think it's really important for this particular framework that I'm talking about. We reference two different types. Um, one is called catabolic energy, and the other is called anabolic energy. Um, for those on the call who've worked with me before, who know me, perhaps you'll be familiar with these different types of energy, you know what I'm talking about. But I'll start off with the catabolic energy, and look at the man on the right, he looks a bit sort of, 
uh, frazzled um, uh, and a bit a bit low on his energy. So um, energy shows up in the form of stress. So when we perceive a situation as being stressful, when we may feel things like fear, doubt, worry, overwhelm, frustration, anger, resentment, or even entitlement. And what is actually happening is your brain is signal signaling to your body to generate catabolic hormones like cortisol or adrenaline in order to give you that energy to deal with that situation. And the energy comes from the very cells and tissues of your body. And this extra energy allows you to um, move into action. But as we know, long-term stress can impact your well-being um, as it's exhausting your physical, uh, mental and emotional resources. It can actually lead to burnout over um, long periods. Now, how many of you have experienced this over and over again? Um, how exhausting and depleted stress can make you feel? It literally eats away at your energy. So when you're experiencing catabolic energy, your focus is on the pain or problem. Now, catabolic energy isn't bad. We need it. It's not negative. If we need to fight, we need that fight or flight reaction. Of course we need it. Um, it's just an indicator of stress that is draining you. So if you can get into the root of it, you can actually release it. Now, in contrast, if you look at the lady on the left, she looks like she's been really creative. Now, she's representing anabolic energy, and that's not stressful at all. So without stress, your body generates anabolic hormones, things like uh, dopamine and endorphins. And the purpose of these hormones is to heal the body, build tissue and generate cells. This allows the body to optimize itself. And as a result, it's easier to maintain a solution focus. So literally your, 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 your filter and your lenses are like this. They're much more open. You can make decisions and, <clears throat> um, and be more creative, tap into your intuition, etc. And as a result of that, it's very kind of propels you forward into new possibilities and opportunities. Now, I talked about um, a framework earlier and I wanted to introduce you to something because I thought this was genius when I first saw it because actually um, it helps you to understand where you are. So um, now the energetic self-perception chart, this is an IPEC um, tool that I, I, just, I just used, but um, I want to share it with you because actually um, you could take a photograph of this as you want. I'm actually not asking you to, 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 to buy anything from me here, but you actually, it's a really useful, interesting tool. So um, if you can see that, hopefully you're not on a mobile phone, I will expand this a bit in a moment. Um, if you look at the inner circle, you can see their level one and two are in the center and they're catabolic. That's called uh, catabolic levels. And if you can see there, they're linked to words like core thoughts, core emotions and actions. And I'll go through those um, in a moment. But then you get into the more uh, into the outer circles, which there's two outer circles with levels in there from three to seven, and they are more anabolic. So the further out of the circle that you go, the less catabolic and the more anabolic a person will feel depending on their perspective, all right? So depending on the belief systems and values we experience, all seven levels, we all experience all the seven levels of different situations, but our level of energy will shift depending on, 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 on those levels that we're actually operating at that point. We're never just one level. This is just a framework that we use to kind of just to demonstrate it. Now, in addition to the seven energetic lenses, the chart shows how your thoughts, feelings, and actions can be as associated with each other in each level. And during um, the course of any given day, you'll experience all the energy levels. Just, but maybe at some points when you respond out of stress, you will experience the world a little differently. Some of us go into sort of angry mode. Some of us go into victim mode. Some of us are very rational when we go into stress. It just depends how we've been brought up, our environment, or just nat some of us are just naturally better th than others. But the key thing is here, again, is once you have the awareness of it, you have the ability to be able to change it. So, um, we're going to move through those levels because I want to bring them to life a little bit more for you to be able to understand them. So I'm going to start off with the two catabolic levels. OK, so at these levels, people are reactionary because they are at the effect of life, at least. Well, at least they feel that way anyway. So let's let's dive into those. <clears throat> so we'll start off with level one and we call this level the victim. And this is 100 percent anabolic. Um, and it's a head level. 
Um, so people tend to be in their heads a lot when they're, when they're in here spinning maybe out of control. Now the core thought associated with um, uh, level one is victim. I lose, um, I hate myself, things are outside of my control, no power. And when we talk about victim, we're not talking about being a victim, it's just victim to that current circumstance. And now when you think about victim thinking, <clears throat> it's linked to apathy, all right, in terms of that chain. Um, and it creates things like guilt, fear, worry, or overwhelm. Now, in terms of an action, we tend to feel quite lethargic when we're in victim mode, uses up a lot of our energy. We get withdrawal, avoidance, hopelessness, uh, and we tend to focus a lot on ourselves because we feel sorry for ourselves, and rightly so. Sometimes we need to. Now, what I'd like you to do is perhaps think about areas of your life, just for a moment, as I'm speaking, where you might uh, experience level one energy yourself. And perhaps even think about maybe where, what, what happens when you're around other people that display this, this level of energy. Um, you kind of get, kind of from this perspective, you tend to kind of avoid things. Um, you go into crisis mode, you become inactive, withdrawn, and you get a sense of like, I'm, I lose. I've got nothing, I can't win here. Okay. So that's level one. Now we move on to level two. So level two is what we call the fighter. Um, and the fighter is 70% anabolic and 30% anabolic. And it's what we call a heart level. So the core thought with the fighter is conflict. Um, it's very controlling. Um, it's very problem focused, very right, wrong thinking, black and white, lots of judgment here, right? And because it's linked to um, um, us emotionally, it can actually bring up a lot of anger, resentment, hatred, greed, blame, um, overwhelm uh, to a degree. Now, the action that's associated with these, the, that thought and that feeling is defiance, all right? So it can bring up stress, it can bring up disappointment, frustration, struggle, and the focus always tends to be on somebody else. It's their fault, it's their fault, that kind of thing. Um, so if you think about this level, it's, it's something that we see a lot in the workplace, it's something that we see a lot in the world at the moment. This one is, um, <clears throat> again, highly catabolic. And um, you get it, when, you, when, you're, when people operate at this level, it tends to be about winning against you. I win, you lose kind of perspective. All right, so just have a think for a minute, maybe where this shows up for you. Um, and also perhaps where uh, you might experience this around other people as well. Because obviously when you get these two levels, both people at level two, you go into that conflict mode. So it's useful to be able to come up with another perspective to actually maybe dampen that conflict. Um, the first two levels are what, are, you know, a lot of people, you, you see this in the world a lot, as I said, um, um, but with some awareness, you can actually shift out of this a bit more. Okay, so we're gonna move on to the next set of levels and uh, we're going out into the next circle, which gives us levels three, four and five. So let's have a look at those. So level three, um, we reference as the rationalizer. And we call this the gateway to anabolic energy as it's 60% anabolic and 40% catabolic. And again, this is a head level. Now these percentages that I've given you is just part of a framework. It's not real science, but it gives you a sense of <clears throat> kind of if you were to put a measure on it from kind of the catabolic to anabolic um, in terms of a scale. Now, if you think about um, the rationalizer level, the core thought is about responsibility. Um, I forgive you. It's okay. I can put up with that. You know, you're different to me. Um, the core feeling is forgiveness. All right, which gives you um, emotional, emotional relief. It's a level that we use an awful lot when we're putting aside differences, if we have grudges or judgments about things, it's a place that we can go for safety because it gives us that relief, you're able to forgive. And as a result, it gives you um, the ability to be able to cooperate. And this is where tolerance lives. So as, as people, we, we, we tolerate an awful lot, but if you can actually go into this level, it's great because you can actually sort of rationalize things, things are good enough, you can cope, you can normalize, okay? It's good enough. So um, think about where maybe level three shows up for you. Where do you use level three? And um, maybe think about other people in your life that um, 
display this level of energy? And how do you feel about that? All right, then we're gonna have a look at level four. Now level four, we call the caregiver, it's the perspective of caring. Um, this is 70% anabolic and 30% catabolic. And it's the level where people are in service to others and they like solving problems. The, the, the other person tends to be the focus. Um, there's a core thought here around concern, caring. Uh, it's around the feeling of compassion, gratitude, and, and also love. And the action of which is the service piece. You don't tend to take things personally because it's not about you. You tend to be quite playful. It's a really um, uh, nice level. We see a lot of um, people um, such as service, people in the service professions, uh, doctors, nurses, policemen, teachers, and also a lot of mums as well um, emitting this level of energy. It's actually um, a very <coughs> calm and a, a nice energy to be able to, to or perspective to choose. Um, now, thinking about that, um, have a think about where you notice level four energy showing up in your life, um, be it personally or professionally. And then again, think about maybe where level four shows up around you. Do you have some people that put you, you first? It's actually, it's quite a nice feeling when, you, when, you, when you're around level four people because they focus on you. Uh, they not tend to focus on themselves. Now, if you are a level four person, you might want to think about maybe where you could rein level four in. If you, you're over, over the top in terms of maybe uh, over caring of people and put yourself first. It's a very interesting level, level four. Um, so, Let's then have a look at the next level, which is level five. Level five is the opportunist. And the opportunist is it's not about taking advantage of people. It's about where people are, are looking for an opportunity in every situation for the good. OK, so it's 80 percent anabolic, 20 percent catabolic. Um, so when you start to see win win energy showing up, it's where you, you want to win for everybody. It's a, it's a nice when, you, when you're working with other people for the greater good kind of thing. So it's all about reconciliation as the core thought. We both win, I understand you. Um, it's where curiosity lives. So if you are um, in conflict, coaches use this an awful lot, you can use a level five curiosity. It's a very action orientated um, level. It's a, it's a leadership, great leadership level as well. Um, it gives you a peace, uh, sense of peace, calm, confidence, objectivity. And the core action is all about acceptance, fulfillment, strong out of faith and the focus on, on everyone. So people that admit this kind of this level are um, they see opportunities, not problems. So they tend to focus on the solution, not not what's broken kind of thing. Um, so have a think about maybe where level five shows up for you. And maybe where perhaps level five is showing up in other people. How does that make you feel? All right, so we're going to go on to um, level, uh, the next set, last two levels before we can bring this together. And we'll start with level six. So level six is all about the visionary. So the experience is the opportunity. So whether I talked about it earlier, whether the experience is good or bad, it's just an experience. Now, this level is 90% anabolic. Uh, it's like being in the flow. Yeah, so some of you know what I'm talking about when you're doing something you're really passionate about, when you're really being really creative, you're just, just enjoying something in that moment. Um, it's where your intuition comes alive. The core thought is synthesis. Uh, the feeling is joy, connection, calm and flow. Um, and this is where wisdom comes in. This is when you get kind of, you're able to work things out. It's where you can be really, really creative. Um, and as I said, when you're in the flow. So it's, um, it's quite a peaceful level um, and you get all the answers to everything that are available to you here. Um, now you might find this when you're doing things like yoga or gardening or playing the piano or working on a project at work that you really love, okay? And then lastly, level seven, which is the creator. Uh, this is a place of unconditional love and, and creation. It's 100% anabolic. So this is a place where judgment doesn't live. So when you're here, you don't judge anything and you're, you're right at the top of that circle, you're anabolic, you're feeling great because nothing's bothering you, okay? Completely objective, um, it's where passion lives and um, it's all about creative creation and, and genius thinking. So there's no judgment here, nothing is good or bad, it just is. All right, we don't spend our lives here. 
Um, there are rare moments, fleeting moments, where we just disappear sometimes and we don't judge anything. Um, the one thing that takes you out of this level is judgment. So uh, maybe think about how often you judge things, what do you judge, who do you judge? Again, I'm not judging you judging, I'm just, I'm just asking you to have a think about it because sometimes there are opportunities to make small tweaks around some of the things we judge so that we can be a little bit more up uh, in the anabolic energy. I'll right, just put that into sort of a couple of example perspectives. So um, has anybody been cut off while driving a car? Um, so if you think about being cut off in a driving a car um, and you look about the illustration on the left and the right, um, you might think from a level one perspective, I always get cut off, this always happens to me and you blame yourself. Um, from a level two perspective, you might think, you stupid idiot, I'll show you and blame the other guy. From a level three perspective, you might think, wow, that was a close call. He probably drives like a maniac all the time. It must just be tough being him. We're both okay though, all is forgiven. From a level three perspective, you might think, wow, poor guy must have had some kind of family emergency going on. I hope he gets what he's going, where, where he's going safely and that everything is okay for him and his family. And the level five perspective might be, oh, what a close call, glad we didn't have an accident. What a great opportunity to exercise patience and to know all of my reflexes still work. From a level six perspective, you might just think, oh, just another day out on the road experiencing what life has to offer. And from a level seven perspective, you might just think, what traffic? Uh, another example of that might be from a perspective, um, you just started a new job and your new manager started to give you pieces of work that put, put um, you out of your comfort zone. Now, if you look at the lady on the left, she looks a bit scared, right? So she might be thinking, this isn't fair. They're all against me. They're trying to test me. They don't like me. Okay, very victim thinking. Level two might be, uh, you're not going to catch me out. I'll figure this out, even if I have to stay late. That might be level two, kind of fighting spirit. Level three might be, this is going to be okay. I'll, I'll be able to figure out, I'll ask for some help. And level four might be, uh, wow, my manager must really think a lot of me to put such trust in me. They must be really busy. I'd love to help as much as I can. Level five might be, what a great opportunity. I wonder what I can learn today. And level six might be, I've always wanted to try this work experience. This, this might be my calling. And level six, level seven would be again, kind of what job? Okay, so I'm just gonna stop sharing and give me, just give me one second. Flicking into the other presentation. Okay. All right, so now if, we, if I illustrate that a little bit clearer in that framework, so taking just the key points and the key levels that I was talking about in this framework, you can see how the core of this level is linked to each set of core thoughts, emotions, and actions. So, and as you, as you look at these levels, and, and I invite you to take a photograph of this if you want to now with your phone, we're actually gonna be doing a little exercise with this in a, in a moment with your perspective. Um, you can actually, if you try on the perspective, you actually feel differently. So if you, if you, um, if you were thinking about um, being confrontational or, or conflicting thoughts, if you choose a perspective that's from the caregiver, or see the other person's perspective, you will actually see a difference in the way that you feel and the way that you act. Now this will actually take awareness and practice, but I, I hope you can appreciate from what, I'm, what I've been saying in terms of the catabolic energy. If you spend an awful lot of time uh, in level one and level two for the majority of your life, these levels are actually linked to catabolic energy. So if you are worrying about things a lot, if you have a defeatist um, perspective or you're always fighting or you're in judgment about something, again, all fine, but there might be 
things that you might be able to work on to be able to change your perspective and come from a more anabolic perspective to actually stop using up energy on things that, that actually don't serve you. Okay, now doesn't always happen overnight, but this I, I um, um, this this was a game changer for me when I when I first started learning this stuff. Is actually it actually works. You can actually change the, your perspective. You'll actually feel a difference in yourself, and you'll actually have a more objective and um, and and calmer and peace uh, areas of your life could be actually much calmer, much more peaceful. So. It's up to you, you don't have to, you're not asking you to change anything, but we do have a choice. So remember that, that Mr. Men um, at the beginning where you know you can either uh, accept something, resign to fate, change something and um, uh, make a change or think differently about the perspective and be something that's more empowering for you, right? So we all have a choice. Okay, so we're gonna go, back to your perspective, the one that you wrote down earlier. So I'm ask, gonna ask you to kind of look at that again, put that in front of you. And I would like you to uh, reflect on that perspective that you wrote down. Okay. So think about, and I'll, I'll bring up the seven levels in a moment for you, but I want you to think about the perspective and then if you can match it to the level, the one to seven, maybe think about the one that, one that comes up for you. And in a moment, we're gonna try on a different perspective and identify a different way of thinking about that situation that you wrote down. So the way to do this is just to maybe write down a few words on a piece of paper. Um, so for example, if your perspective was confrontational, perhaps it might be a push for you to go some, to something more optimistic. So you might want to do, put something down that's a bit more rational, all right? Or if you want to be compassionate, maybe you could use level four. Okay, so just bear that in mind. I'll just give you a little bit of time. I'll bring up the seven levels to give you a little bit of help. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get you then to close your eyes. And then just take it to a couple of breaths. And then think about your, your perspective, the, the thing that was happening to you. And just for a moment, I then want you to think about your new perspective of that situation. Really think those words. And then just take a note, a mental note of how you're feeling. Do you feel different? Do you feel less? irritated? Do you feel less upset? Do you feel less defeated? Perhaps you were, ration, you were rationalizing, now you feel more opportunist. Okay, so just make a note of those perspectives. Some of you, for some of you, it will work easy, uh, better than others. For the first time, it can, it can be quite challenging. But this, the ability to be able to visualize um, will actually give you an indicator of how it's actually going to be in the real world. But this, again, this will take some practice. Okay, and then what I want to do next is I want to give you um, something that you can take away. So you can actually try this on in the real world. And I would like you to just, if you like, you can take a photograph of this. Of this three of this live perspective strategy and i call it live perspective because simply if you're in the moment um, you're going to need something that you can actually leverage as you start trying to change your perspective in in different aspects of your life so the trick with this is to identify the trigger which we've done today um, and you can look at it in your in any area of your life right uh, nothing too heavy to begin with, because obviously this is going to take some reflection on your part. But in the moment when it's happening, these are the things that you need to do. So the first thing is you, you basically, before you react, you stop. You stop yourself and you just take a breath. Um, you know, you, you might need something to help you remind you. You might have something on your, as a post-it in front of you on your computer if you're working. You just stop for a moment and then you observe what you're thinking. And then the second step 
is to ask yourself one of the following questions in the moment. You might want to say, what thought am I having about this situation? What am I making it mean? What's the story here? And then lastly, perhaps why am I being triggered? All right. If you can remember one of those, that's great. If you can remember more than that, fantastic. And then the last thing is to then try on a different perspective. So think about it differently. Put a perspective on that serves you, that's going to stop you from being maybe irritated or frustrated or um, upset um, on that day or at that moment. And I invite you to try this on um, out in the real world in your life just to see what a difference it can make. And I can guarantee you with some practice, it does take practice to do this because you need to um, invest in yourself in terms of your reflection work. Um, this will actually make a difference to you. Okay. So this is kind of, where um, I'm going to draw the masterclass to a close. This is this is the the I hope the information that I've given you, the wisdom that I've given you, has been of, of interest to you. Um, this is how you can shift your perspective um, using a simple framework. Um, you can actually use the perspectives that um, in your own way, in your own life, they're up to you because they're personal, um, and you can um, stop wasting your energy on things that don't serve you and start to sort of train your, rewire your brain to think differently and actually have energy for the things that you want to do. Um, so as we close, um, before we go into the QA, I'd like you to consider what you've learned from the session and just consider the following questions um, for a few moments. So I just want you to think about maybe when you're going back to your energy levels, what energy levels or perspectives are holding you back? Which ones do you think are, are showing up the most for you? And what, what, what might you want to change? What are your biggest triggers? What have you identified? Maybe some things that have come up. And then what, who, and why are you judging? Maybe you're judging yourself. We often are. And then lastly, uh, what areas might you want to change? Just give you a, a few seconds to think about that. Okay, so as I bring this session to a close, I'd just like to give everybody a huge thanks uh, to everyone that attended today and giving up some of your time. I know it's at the end of the day for most of us. Um, and I hope that you've all been able to take something away with you, uh, a little bit of snippet of wisdom that you might be able to implement in your day um, and put in place in your life so that you might think a little bit differently about things and bring some more energy into your life.